All right. Well, good. Okay, kia ora everybody. Um, I'm here with uh, Jared Clark from uh, Mount Maunganui um, College, and he is going to share with us a little bit about their awesome um, hiding that they incorporate into their outdoor education program. So I'll just get him to introduce himself and give us an overview of this. Thanks, Jared. No worries. Uh, kia ora te whanau. Um, he called Jared Takuingwa. Um, so I, yeah, I am lucky enough to be a outdoor education teacher at Mount Maunganui College in the Bay of Plenty. Um, really, really awesome school. Um, this is my sixth year teaching there now. Um, to be fair, I had no clue what I was doing in regards to uh, outdoor ed when, when I first uh, got my job there, but was really, really lucky to have some really good mentors uh, that have taught me the ropes, I guess, and always trying to learn as much as I can. Um, in regards to our our hiding a unit, um, this was this was something that was actually been established since before I got to school um, by a, a, a woman called Jane Townsend who did amazing things um, at Mount Maunganui College with with outdoor education, and I know is now doing amazing things down in Nelson as well, which is really really cool. Um, yeah, like I say, I was lucky enough to kind of try and be a bit of a sponge around her when she was around, as well as some other awesome outdoor teachers uh, we've had along the way at Mount Maunganui College. Um, our our hiding a unit is kind of is, is yeah, obviously it's got a, a nice um, place responsive approach where we generally want the kids to be coming away from it with uh, a better understanding of of their local place, um, not just from a sense of knowing where things are, but a sense of what's happened there in the past in terms of uh, te ao Māori, um, in, in terms of uh, what happened in colonial times, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the beauty of a place responsive approach that we try and take with it is that obviously it keeps costs down a bit because there's little to no uh, travel away from away from your your local area, which is which is a beautiful thing. And we find well, we're very lucky in regards to um, where we are geographically in terms of uh, the amazing places that we have around us. So that kind of makes that job a little bit easier in regards to it being really engaging for our students and there being some really rich, rich uh, learning around local places. Um, as well as um, a bit of an understanding around um, local Māori history and uh, kind of what's happened there in the past is getting them to try and form their own personal uh, connection with, with their with their local place so that obviously so obviously the more you connected you are with a place uh, the, the more you care about it uh, that's both from an environmental point of view and um, and spiritual point of view uh, in a lot of ways so and obviously the more connected you are the more likely you are to pass that on to uh, in terms of values to uh, to your children and and so on so that's kind of the kind of I guess the crux of it is yeah can more connection with uh, with the environment more connection with Maori history and through that more connection with themselves and each other. Awesome. And so in terms of like seeing the students, um, you know, at the start of the year and the, at the end of the year, do you see them, you know, like make some gains uh, by participating in this hiringa? Yeah, definitely. So um, the, the the kind of I guess gains, as you say, that they they make a um, a kind of uh, covered in a couple of different ways. One of them, one of them, obviously, they they get a better understanding of the importance of pronouncing um, to do Maori correctly. So obviously, the importance of that is massive to us as citizens of Aotearoa. But um, not only that understanding what local place names mean the history behind them and that makes that makes them kind of walk a little bit taller around their local area as awesome. well as that for um for some uh some people that like for example who have maori lineage that uh kind of know their pepeha but don't know a heck of a lot around um around uh, other than what who their iwi is or their hapu it actually enables them sometimes to make more connection and go ha. Oh, oh my gosh, that's my iwi that was involved in that story. And I didn't even realize that. That's so cool. That place is named after my ancestor. Like that's, that's a really special thing. <clears throat> as well as that, obviously, um, a, a big, so something we do 
as a part of it is we actually get the students to try and go out and find the information around the history of these places themselves, rather than us just giving them the resources that we have. Obviously, if they if they struggle to and can't find that, we, we nudge them in the right direction or do give them some uh, some resources. Yeah. But um, in the in the process of having to go out and, and do that, obviously a lot of a lot of Maori history is not necessarily written; it's spoken. So um, that that kind of is a really really cool thing for them to not just be able to go and Google something sometimes, and actually have to try and track down who they need to talk to, and because that then creates more connection with our local iwi as well. Because a lot mm. of them are someone who from Waitirangi, for example, that uh, that whose um, whose kid used to go to Mount College, and so now they're reconnecting again, and that's a really cool thing. So through through that that process and then having to actually present and speak to the history of that place when we're at that place or looking out to that place on our hiringa, um, that obviously they they need to become more confident in themselves speaking and pronouncing Māori correctly in front of people and I think the confidence they gain from that is is a really cool thing. It is quite a confronting thing for a lot of people, obviously as it as it as it is. Um, just because it's so far out of some people's comfort zones. But um, yeah, obviously we know as educators the, that when you're in that uh, feeling of discomfort, you're generally in a learning zone, which is a pretty cool thing. Yeah, awesome. And um, when we spoke earlier, you um, said you're planning on making a few changes to the hiding and ch changing things up a little bit. Um, what are those changes and why, why are you um, bringing these in? Um, so we, the, my, myself and Erin Porteous, who's another um, amazing outdoor teacher at, at Mount College, she, um, we, we kind of put our heads together around trying to make our hikui, because there's a couple of parts of it that sometimes can be logistically a bit hard in regards to um, pick up and drop off of bikes and stuff like that. Um, so what, we, what we're trying to do is find a way to limit that the problems logistically but we all um Erin actually also had the amazing idea of actually following um following the path that Mowal took uh in the which is in the story of Mowal and how it's got its name is one of the the biggest uh, most famous stories in Tauranga Moana so yeah. that's um we thought to actually follow where he he went would be pretty pretty amazing and to do that on foot and on or on bike and or by waka whatever that looked like um would be a really special thing to do um because we don't that we know of it's not really been done yeah. so that we think that could be something really really special and obviously it has um massive ties to our kura and our and our our students at our, at our kura around um in terms of our, our local local history which is which is really cool Mm, that sounds amazing and really cool um, way to connect students back to that history, eh? Yeah. Um, so for someone wanting to give this a go in their own area, uh, in their own school, um, do you have any suggestions on where to start? If they're like, oh, that sounds cool, I'd, I'd like to give it a crack. What, where do they start? Well, the, I think but in regards to starting point has got to be you got to know you got to know your why so like why are you going to do it i guess the same with anything yeah. um so what what do you actually want your students to get out of it what's the purpose of it and um a lot of the time an easy place to start with that is to either link it back to uh history that's related to the school or to school values in regards to what you actually want them to get out of that so if you're and we're we're extremely lucky in new zealand Obviously, there's so, there's so much rich, rich Māori history, a lot of it, or some of it known, a lot of it not known that well, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a really cool thing. So my, my main advice is if you're going to do it, understand your why, but then also make it, make it a genuine experience. So what I mean by that is make, make sure the learning's genuine, make sure it's done in all the right ways. So for example, if you want them to learn the, um, the history of the, the local Māori history, for example, is one of your main whys for, for your, your haerenga, make sure that you're finding that out from reliable sources. So mm -hmm. rather than just trusting something that you got off Wikipedia, actually go, get out into the community and have that conversation. So a lot of the time that will take the teacher who's in charge of it actually going out and making those connections first having those conversations, seeing what, um, what, that, what that looks and sounds and feels like around that local area yeah. um, before actually sending students out. 
because obviously if, if you don't know it's going to be hard you don't you can't help them to um, point them in the right direction uh, and then with that being genuine is, is so so important so because one other thing as well is obviously with, with Maori history and I'm, I'm no expert in any way shape or form but there's so many little differences in terms of how stories are told based mm -hmm. on who you speak to so um, two two local iwi might have a slightly different version of the same a same story that happened in that in that, that space. So, really, really, and that, that that's what makes it amazing is hearing these different these differences. And because that's not to say that either of them are wrong, it's just that's how both iwi have have told that story. So, I I think that's a really special um, way. And an example of that for us here is uh, Tikuia Rock um, off the side of Mowal. So. There's two different stories um, around um, how that rock got there and the significance of that rock, um, and that's a really cool thing. So we, the kids, learn both and then present both at that same spot, and we discuss um, the the importance of that. So yeah, um, yeah, keep it, know your why, um, make sure to keep it genuine. So actually, try and find out information uh, from people that people that are in the know, yeah. and if if you don't know where to start in terms of finding those people you're bound to have someone at your school or a whanau involved with your school that will know someone to 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 speak to to start those conversations yeah awesome and you've kind of answered the next question i was going to ask as well which is advice for people uh wanting to incorporate um you know more te ao maori into um their haerenga and um but they're unsure where to begin you know so yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Lo lo local iwi. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know for, for example, in, in Tauranga Moana, our local iwi are so, so keen to be getting involved with, with different schools. So, uh, and, and, be, and be involved in the conversations around the education of, of, our, of our students. So, that's a really, um, really special connection to tap into, I think. So, it's just a matter of finding who your connections are. Um, and then getting those conversations happening from there, yeah. and obviously with the with in terms of uh, talking about uh, incorporating incorporating Matauranga Maori and Tikanga Maori into it, if you can then incorporate at some some point into your hiding a um, being able to stay on a marae for for the night, that is a whole mm -hmm. other um, part of richness as well, like a local marae have a porphyry onto the onto the marae and then get taken because that's a whole nother learning some some mm -hmm. kids get, might get it at primary school but then they they never have that again mm. potentially so mate remaking those connections and then for someone again it's all about connections someone might have been uh might, might have stayed at that marae when they were five years old and then they go, oh my gosh, I remember coming here and I remember this and that and yeah. other little history down there. And that's where we used to go looking for the eels at night and things like that. That's that's really, really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh man, some some great um, advice there, Jared. No, all good. Just wondering in terms of where your um, hiding a fits in during the year, is it a start of the year thing for you guys, an end of the year? And um is it do you use uh 3.9 to um kind of as part of that at the moment that journey so uh we've we've historically done it um in term two yeah. um before the weather gets too gnarly yeah. but uh we've uh this year we were planning to also last year covid kind of got in the way of a lot of our outdoor edge trips as i'm sure yeah. a lot of people did um yeah. and then this year it's actually a, a pretty similar story so what well because we moved it to this term um you're into in a general sense your hiding should just fit where will will fit where it best suits your your local place and and your resources so for example if you're wanting to do something uh have some of it water-based well, term, term be a lot better suited than term two or three um, but yeah, it, it, it completely depends on what you're going to be doing for that hiding and how you plan on um, have, on moving around and what you want to see. Um, what was the second part of that question? Sorry. Um, uh, oh, how uh, assessment that you tie into it. Do you oh, use yes. 3.9? Um, and I think there were some unit standards you were using as well around pronunciation and 
district? Yeah. yeah, so unfortunately, the unit standard we used to use around the importance of um, Maori pronunciation, correct Maori pronunciation and tourism has um, expired, like a lot of those um, field Maori unit standards have, unfortunately. Uh, but it's what's exciting around that is the changes happening with NCA obviously in the next couple of years really hoping a lot of that's going to be revamped and about obviously into achievement standard which in the eyes of some students and, and um, teachers brings more value to the assessment which yeah. is another conversation but yeah. um, so usually incorporate that but then either 2.3 so they actually train for the hiding us so because obviously ah. there's a lot of lot of cycling so for example we go up um, a, a road called reed road it's yep. pretty pretty steep uh work on a on a bike so um they have to be fitter and, and stronger than they than they than your, your usual person i guess so uh 2.3 alongside that has worked really well um a lot of the time we'll use 2.8 uh around social responsibility because we're out in our local community. We're having making those connections, having to show leadership on the camp through, <clears throat> through through presenting, helping each other out, help, helping pack up gear, set up gear at the mud eye, doing the same thing there. So, if there happens to be someone that's competent um, or confident in doing fai kōrero, rather than a that, than a teacher um, for the purpose of that, that's a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so two point eight works well alongside it, and obviously there's not a heck of a lot of content to be taught alongside there so you can put more around your uh your maori maori pronunciation learning uh, for a lot yeah. of the kids oh, cool. um, another one we've we've also kind of used in the past a little bit is 2.9 so around um planning uh, an outdoor event um but yeah with with obviously changes happening and us looking to make changes with our hiding as well we're kind of hanging off the assessment because for us I think what we're really lucky with is we got a department where the, we try to not let the well, the tail wag the dog too much. So we'd rather have our learning set and our why and our purpose, yeah. and then making a make a assessment fit to it rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Which is probably my other bit of main advice is to for it to be genuine, it shouldn't be based on an assessment. Yeah, you'll be able to find assessment that that work with the learnings that you're trying to get your kids mm -hmm. to get. Out of. Great tip. Awesome. Oh, well, thank you um, so much for sharing all that. Um, I think there'll be a lot of people find that real interesting. And um, yeah, really cool to just share some of the really awesome things that are happening um, all over the place at the moment. Uh, exciting times. Yeah, awesome. Um, I will end that recording. Thank you, Jared.